Hello again. Now, a short while ago, we told you about the president launching Anglo-American's hydrogen-powered ultra-class mine hall truck in Limpopo. My colleague, Govan Whittle, is on the ground following that story. Good afternoon, Govan. Thank you uh, for joining us. We've seen the live visuals where you are. We've heard from the president a little bit earlier. Why is this development viewed as so important? <laughs> Because the president says this is the genesis of South Africa's green hydrogen economy. It's something that has been promising for a while, um, and they hope to generate power through renewable energy. This truck that you've just seen in pictures is just one of the ways that they'll make that happen. And this hydrogen was produced right here at the Mohalakwena mine of Anglo-American platinum in Limpopo. We've got a small hydrogen plant just off camera. They're producing the hydrogen using solar panels. It's a renewable energy revolution here um, and these trucks formerly used to drive on diesel right now this is the prototype uh, so this is what is possible in the future but as things stand the status quo is that diesel is still being used to burn um, some of the energy that's needed at the mines with me is the Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy in South Africa Minister Gwede Mantash he will speak to us a bit uh, about the potential of this project and Minister let's begin there the president outlined the N1 to N3 green hydrogen corridor uh, what does that look like for South Africa the the first thing that we talked about was uh, how many years will it take for them to have these drugs in the pit. Uh, they said in about the uh, end of this uh, de decade, they will be in a situation where they will have sufficient of these drugs in the pit. Sorry, Minister, I, I hate to come in there, but I see the President is answering questions ar ar around uh, what he's spoken about here today, and uh, we'll try to have a listen and, and just uh, what he's saying there at the moment. Shareholders, community, workers, so it's a very beneficial ecosystem for everyone as we now move into a new economy, a hydrogen driven economy. So this, this has really been a historic moment, not only for this area, our province here, but also for the company Anglo-American, as well as for our country. This is, uh, the, gives us a clear vision of what the future can look like. Because through this, as I was saying, through developing a hydrogen system, we are going to be creating other sub sectors of the economy. Transportation will benefit, as I said, agro processing, what drives those machines and all that. We want that to be driven by hydrogen and then we reduce our carbon emissions. So, this is a great moment for us. That hostility that you were talking about, which will be very much important in ensuring that. That, uh, the, the relationship between the mine and uh, the mine workers who are looking for wages as, uh, as well will be able to be in a position to bring together uh, this unity. You say uh, the, the, the hostility uh, uh, belongs in a dustbin. I'm sure that is something that you, you mean so that even the impasse in Caltonville could be dealt with urgently. Precisely. We, cre we must create an ecosystem that is beneficial all around in terms of labor relations, in terms of driving productivity, in terms of in investment in terms of community corporate investment everything health and safety it must be a beneficial health uh, ecosystem where the hostilities are brought down and almost eliminated and where people work on the basis of consensus to drive our economy forward this gives us a clear vision of what the future should look like thank you very much thank you very much president, uh, president. No, 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 no. All, right, all right uh, all right I wanted to ask a question there, Mr. President, but uh, we're not being allowed through. Um, but uh, we are still here at the Mohalakwena mine um, in Limpopo. The President's entourage just moving through. We'll, we'll try to let them pass uh, if we can for the moment, and then we'll get back to it. Uh, Minister Mantashe, we were speaking a, a little bit earlier. I'm sorry to have interrupted, and I feel like I need to come back to you to continue that no, okay. uh, conversation. If you had a conversation with the President, it's okay. Yeah, thank you so much, Minister Mantashe, for allowing us. You touched on load shedding. In your, in your speech. Yes. Um, and, and right now we are in load shedding. You have said before on record uh, that it would be important for South Africa to, to generate some nuclear power 
Harbour um, if possible. But just this week we had calls for uh, the ESCOM situation to be declared a state of national disaster. Uh, what's your view on that? Now, uh, what should be declared is that ESCOM is not operating optimally. Therefore, all efforts must be put on ESCOM to operate optimally. Uh, it is having 45,000 megawatts connected capacity. At best, it is operating at 30,000 30, megawatts. The gap between 45 and 30,000, that is where the crisis is. And therefore, as we implement the supplementary program through the IPPs, it must supplement a cohesive program of ESCOM operating optimally. So far, we've seen the IPPs aren't able to save us from load shedding. There still is a shortfall that's being uh, announced by, by ESCOM because they're not able to buy that power from the IPPs uh, just yet. And we've seen warnings from the DPE minister that we might have stage eight load shedding. So wh what do you think the situation, which point does the situation need to get to before we, we, it would be a national disaster? The emphasis is on a wrong place. IPPs are a supplementary program. The primary energy supply in the country is ESCOM. And that supply energy supplier must operate optimally. Then you can drive EPP, IPPs uh, aggressively. Because if you approve, for example, between the 5 and 2,600 megawatts, it will take you two to three years to, to get that energy into the grid. You approve uh, between the 6, another 2,600, you take another two to three years. And it goes on like that. There is nothing like instant energy. But with ESCOM, the capacity is connected, it must generate. It must look after each turbines and service them. And as generators keep breaking down, there are unplanned trips, which, which the ESCOM leadership causes, says causes load shedding. In your view, what should they be doing right now to prevent load shedding? It's a function of servicing. You service your stock. The older it is, the more efficient should you be servicing it. That's, that's what it should be. If you don't, they will collapse their older. But I think this thing of old generators is a misnomer. A man of the older generation are doing better than Kusile and Mitupi. So the reality is that look after your turbines, service them. All right, let's leave it there. Thank you so much, Minister of Mineral Resources and Energy, Energy Gwede Mantash, is saying that ESCOM should be working better um, and doing more to keep their, their fleet in a better condition. Uh, we did hope to ask a question of the president there, but Dan, but weren't able to squeeze it in. Uh, but that'll be all for us, from us uh, here at the Mohalakwena Mine of Anglo Anglo American Platinum um, in Limpopo. Um, and we should be speaking to some of the executives a little bit later on uh, to get some more information on exactly when uh, th this hydrogen truck will be rolled out across the fleet. It's back to you for now. Thank you very much, uh, Governor Whittles. There, we had a moment there with him, and also had some uh, remarks from the president who gave a speech earlier and a couple of questions as well to Minister Gwede Mandashe, Governor Whittles there in Limpopo. Now,